Thanks, Riaz. Good morning. We're just coming up to 6.30. Parents across the province are bracing for rotating strikes at public schools next week as the B.C. Teachers Federation escalates its job action. Union says full-scale walkouts will happen Monday to Thursday next week, with each district being impacted for one day. Pickets will go up Monday morning at the school districts, schools in 16 districts, including Vancouver, New Westminster and Mission. Union President Jim Eicher says the action is in response to the employer's threats of wage rollbacks if instructors don't sign a new contract by the end of the school year. Eventually you have to take a stand, right? And in terms of the amount that we have to work with in the classroom, <laughs> you can only get pushed so far. It is sad to say to a parent, if a child needs counseling or some special testing, that the wait list is not just months, it's years. I'm totally in support of the teachers and I think they've got a raw deal. It's I guess it's a little frustrating as a parent. I mean I have to rearrange my schedule and I mean I'm self employed so I, it's, that's gonna be a lot of time out of my schedule and a lot of time out of my uh, employment. A truck driver is dead after his semi went off the road and slammed into a power pole in North Vancouver overnight. It happened near Pemberton Avenue and First Street at around 3 o'clock this morning. Emergency crews had to be very careful entering the vehicle because it was surrounded by live wires. It's believed the driver may have suffered from a medical condition. Animal advocates have now started a petition for tougher animal cruelty sentences following the deaths of six dogs in Langley. Greg Harper joins us from Langley with the latest. Greg? Good morning, Jody. I'm here at Brookswood Park, an off-leash dog park here in Langley. This is where a memorial remembering a six dogs who died from what's believed to be uh, heat exhaustion. It continues to grow, and they died while under the care of a dog walker. Over here, somebody has actually put the names of the dogs on some tennis balls. Their bodies were found in Abbotsford on Monday. An online petition has just been launched, and it already has nearly 3,000 signatures on it so far. Animal rights advocates want tougher animal cruelty laws in Canada. The organizer of the petition is hoping to get 10,000 signatures on it. Meanwhile, there is some anger that continues to grow here uh, in Langley. Talking to some dog owners here this morning. Uh, this after a dog walker accused of letting six dogs die in the back of her truck initially told police that the dogs had been stolen. Necropsies are being performed on the dogs to determine just how they exactly died, how long they may have been in the vehicle. Uh, in the meantime, uh, no charges have been laid against the dog walker in this case. Jody? An incre incredibly tragic story. Thanks so much. Greg Harper reporting for us this morning. They provide neighborhood-based health care, but four Vancouver clinics are closing in October, and people who use one location in Kitsilano are not happy about it. Patients, doctors and nurses don't want to see the Pine Free Clinic go. They watched the health minister defend the decision during question period earlier in the day. The government is cutting costs by centralizing services at a clinic on the east side. Pine Free specializes in helping youth and young adults with their physical and mental health. Centres like the Pine Free Clinic, which served specifically youth and youth sexual health, um, are really, really in high demand, uh, especially when they're small and neighbourhood-based, so that they're providing the kind of care that, that, uh, that youth need in a very non-judgmental and compassionate fashion. Supporters of Pine Free are rallying at the clinic on Saturday afternoon at 1 o'clock, not just to keep it open, but to thank staff who have worked there for the past four decades. A petition is also making the rounds. Police are hoping this is the day the search for Barry McQuarrie finally ends, but as of this morning, he remains on the loose. Investigators have released new photos of McQuarrie. These images were taken Sunday when the 33-year-old used a payphone in Aldergrove. Police have identified McQuarrie as a suspect in the death of a man in a Cloverdale townhouse last week. They believe he's still in the Lower Mainland, armed and dangerous. Somebody out there in the public, like in this particular case, uh, may come across him and uh, he may look a little different than what a, a single still photo is and a more updated photo may trigger that person who's out in the public and sees him and, and recognizes him and then in turn calls 911. The victim of last week's shooting was 32-year-old Gregory Quinnell. He was reportedly in a relationship with McQuarrie's ex-girlfriend. 
Prince Charles and his wife Camilla will wrap up their four-day Canadian tour in Winnipeg today. The royal visit has made international headlines this week after reports Prince Charles likened Russia's Vladimir Putin to Adolf Hitler. The comments came during Monday's reception for Second World War veterans at the Canadian Museum of Immigration in Halifax. Charles is quoted as saying, quote, Putin is doing just about the same as Hitler after a museum volunteer told the story of how her Jewish family fled to Canada when she was 13.